Hi, today we're going to be going over the displacement filter in Photoshop and without further ado, let's just jump in. If you'd like more context on what we're doing, check out the Reddit thread linked in the description of this video. So a uh, basic overview of what I'm going to do before I start is I'm going to uh, separate the yellow placard from the rest of the image. I'm going to remove the text from it, uh, turn it black and white, save it as its own file, and then bring it back in as a displacement map over the new text, which I'll create at some point. And what a displacement map is, it's, is it's a black and white image that basically says, all right, computer, here's something with a texture on it. Warp the object I'm applying this to uh, relative to how dark the area it, of the displacement map it's on in. So if you have like a t-shirt that has a bunch of wrinkles on it, you want to put text on it, well, the t-shirt image um, of the plain wrinkled t-shirt, if you turn it black and white, the darker and lighter areas will correspond to different uh, depths with wrinkles. You imagine a, a wrinkled shirt or Google it, I don't know. Um, so you'll see how this works. But the first step is we need to duplicate the background layer because you always duplicate the background layer, always, and then turn off the actual background layer. Now we need to get the placard out, and there's a lot of ways to do this. The fastest in this case would literally be just to draw it out with the pen tool. So real quick, real sloppy, doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, graphics work. If it looks right, it is right. So boom, 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 boom. Perfect. Now we have a path of basically what we want out of this uh, yellow piece of paper. So let's go ahead and take that path, turn it into a selection. So I'll try to explain what I'm doing for people who aren't that experienced with Photoshop. Uh, a path is a series of points that are either enclosed or not enclosed. A selection is a group of pixels. So I drew a path and then I turned all of the pixels inside of that path into a selection by clicking this button down here, which is now grayed out. Um, and you can go back and forth and that becomes really handy if you do a lot of cutouts or things of that nature. But uh, basically now I've got this selection and I only want, I want a new layer with only the pixels in that selection. So instead of duplicating the whole layer, which is usually Command J or Control J, um, if you have a certain selection selected, and you can tell because of these marching ants, those indicate a selection, Command J will duplicate only that selection. So I'm just going to Command J and turn off the other layer. And this gives me my, my uh, I keep saying placard, but it's a yellow piece of paper, my sign. Perfect. So now we need to get rid of the text. First thing we need to do is select the text. Now you could, if you were inexperienced or late or really just like doing extra work, you could magic wand all the text and miss a bunch of times. Or you could, you know, quick select all the text and, you know, just give up on life after doing this for every single letter. Or, you know, you could be really, really detail intense and pen tool every single letter, but we're not going to do any of that because we have the beautiful, wonderful color range tool. So it's under select color range. It's actually perfect right now because I went through and did this before I started the tutorial just to make sure I knew what I was doing, but uh, I'll go ahead and reset it real quick. So the basically what happens is, not basically, exactly what happens is you start eye dropping different colors and it adds those colors to the selection until you have exactly what you want. And this is why we isolated the uh, sign first before removing the text because had we not done that we'd also be picking up colors in the guy's vest and whatnot. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start by taking our initial eye drop tool, this guy, and selecting some of the color that the text is and you can see that the text got a little bit better I'm going to switch this to white matte so we only see the selection. And then I'm just going to take the plus dropper and just start adding to it until we have pretty much all of our text selected. Now you could turn the fuzziness up to select more, but then you're going to start getting the edges of the paper is what I found. So in this particular case, um, fuzziness down is better and just start selecting everything we need. Um, and it's getting pretty good. Select until the text is pretty much completely black. 
and it doesn't have to be perfect because like I always say um, and that's not even my saying I stole it from Andrew Kramer video copilot great place to learn after effects if you want to if it looks right it is right so there I am selecting text this selection looks pretty darn good alrighty I think I might be done let's see how's the text over here looks like it might be a little weak over here no we're good perfect so here we are uh, click OK and then command 0 to zoom back out and then command plus to zoom back in or if you have a trackpad or a Mac trackpad at least you can pinch and scroll um, but if you don't hold down space and click and drag by the way uh, if you were wondering how I was doing that we're learning a lot of stuff today so this is good we have the text we want selected but right now if I were to well let me just show you if I was going to uh, try to fill this with yellow right now I would let Photoshop do most of the work for me I do edit fill and instead of filling with a color I would fill it with content aware which will try to generate what might be behind the text if something were or what might be there if it weren't if that makes sense it's really handy for like removing the uh, occasional tourist out of a photo well Mm, that's not great. You can see that the text, we didn't quite select all the text. We've got outlines now, and that doesn't look good at all. So let's undo. Control Alt Z or Command Alt Z is the step backwards, which is kind of like undo, but goes further than one step. So I hit it twice to undo, but hopefully you didn't follow me into that in the first place. Let's go to our select menu and modify our selection by expanding it. Five pixels should do well. So that should should select the text and everything else we need. Perfect. So let's give that another go. Edit, fill, content aware. What? Command D to deselect, by the way. Look at how perfect. We have it. Freaking write a declaration of independence on that shit. All right. So now uh, I'm just going to look through the different color channels. And it looks like green is a nice, um, nice contrasty channel. I like that. So let me just go ahead and uh, create a new document from this green channel by simply duplicating the channel. Now let me explain this for a minute. Uh, just so you know, if you already know this, feel free to skip ahead. Uh, every computer image that was taken with a camera at least, um, this is different for printing, but at least with computer screens are made up of red, green, and blue values. Each pixel has a certain amount of red, a certain amount of green, a certain amount of blue in it. All together, you get this wonderful uh, color image. But if you take one away, you'll see that you know green and blue make this sort of colorish. And if I take out blue, you'll see this, and that all makes sense. And so the green channel is simply a black and white representation of the intensity of the green in the image and in this case the green channel seems to be a good channel because I want I'm looking for as much contrast as I can get now I can increase that if I wanted to go back to layers and real quick just put an adjustment layer up uh, brightness and contrast adjustment adjustment and turn contrast up and brightness up then I could definitely look at the green channel which I got by deselecting red and blue and I think that appears to increase my contrast. So you know what, I think I am gonna do that. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and take that channel, duplicate it uh, to a new document and just call that disp or displacement, but I'm lazy. So here's my displacement document. Perfect, save it. Control S, Command S, disp.psd, replace, because I already made one, but you should be good. Um, also, generally bad practice to save stuff to the desktop, but I don't really care. All right, so now we're back in our main document. Um, I've turned all the channels back on. Uh, delete this brightness and contrast adjustment layer we just made. Uh, so we get back to our normal image. And go ahead and turn the rest of the image on. So now we need to put some text in. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new text layer, which is the T key. We're over here. And just start typing. Uh, let's left align it. Wow, pure poetry right there. Look at this. Oh my gosh, I should be a writer. Um, 
Look at that. Oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> Whoops. Whatever. I don't even care. I'll just delete that. Yay. And then let's make it a better color than that impossible to see. There we go. There we go. Well, let's leave it black for now. Perfect. So now, how do we just dis, uh, displace this? How do we warp it so that it warps with the image? Well, let's turn it uh, first, duplicate it just so we don't accidentally screw up and turn off the background layer, and then turn it into a smart object, which is right click here, convert to smart object. Now, if you know what uh, rasterizing in, in Photoshop, it basically just means take something that is either a shape or text or something else and then turn it into, just flatten it into some pixels, a group of pixels that I can mess with however I want. Usually you would need to rasterize text before you can put filters over it, like distorting it or stuff like that, but um, we want to be able to edit our text later. So instead of smart object, acts kind of like a rasterized text in that we can modify its pixels however we see fit for the most part. Not quite everything. You can't like do a cutout of a smart object, but you can do quite a bit with them. But uh, it, it actually creates a separate like Photoshop document within a Photoshop document. So then when you want to edit it, you double click and it opens up as its own document. Cool. So now that we're clear what a smart object is, let's go ahead and put that knowledge to use. Uh, we can filter a smart object however we see fit, like uh, distort, displace. Uh, leave this the way it is, or if yours doesn't match mine, go ahead and make it match mine. 10, 10, stretch, wrap. Uh, you'll see some really weird stuff if you change them. You can feel free to experiment, of course. Alright, so I have this diffs.psd. Uh, displacement maps, so far, as far as I can tell, can only use uh, Photoshop documents. So, good to know. Open. What? So, this is a little janky looking because it thinks that this change in brightness is a change in depth. But other than that, we should be pretty much good to go. You can also see here, this is where that, um, this is where that part of the image ends. So what we might do instead is uh, undefined areas repeat edge pixels. That might give us a better job. It doesn't appear to. So if I were you, I would just keep the text in the other area. Or you could go through back into your disk.psd and you know mess paint it in and mess with it or do a better job cutting it out because I didn't. Um, so that's our original text layer just so you can compare. And yeah, cool. So um, uh, I would just not put text here. It would be the easy solution there. But yeah, now the text is warped as if it were actually on this piece of paper. See? Cool. Um, anything else? I think if we move it, it doesn't actually, it doesn't uh, re-displace the way it should. So if you were to move it, you would need to reapply the displacement map by double-clicking the displace filter. And see, now that reapplied in the correct manner. So, you know, with that out of the way. Um, we're pretty much done. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything else. Uh, no, I think we're good. We can change the text. We can go in here and let's say we want to change this text so that we don't have anything over. That should do well. Always with adjustment or with uh, smart objects, you always have to save before tapping back into the other document. There we go. That pretty much solved all our issues, right? Yeah, not really. Still a couple rows. That's fine. I don't really care that much. So there you go. Displacement maps.